I'm wearing a lipstick for the first time that is called 80s Me from Give Beauty. So of course I had to do a hi pony and channel the 80s just a little bit. I'm back in my basket era. And in this basket, I've got my spring eyeshadow picks that I wanna share with you guys today. Well, hi everyone. You'd think that it would be spring, but not here in New York after days and days and days of cold and wet rain. I couldn't take it anymore and I decided to film a whole bunch of spring content today. I just filmed my spring basket of doom. I don't know, that video might be up already. It's probably gonna be the first one that's up, but we'll see what order I decide to edit these in. And then today I wanted to talk to you guys about all the eyeshadow palettes that I'm pulling out for the spring season. So my top picks this year, I wanna say I have 12 spring eyeshadow palettes. So before we jump in, if you're new here, then hi and welcome. My name is Natalia and I'm a concert pianist who loves all things beauty. And if you're not new here, thank you so, so much for coming back. The motto of this channel is to try to use the makeup that I already own and just on occasion sprinkle in some new items, some new acquisitions. And there's going to be all of that in this video today. So if you're interested in a mixed bag of content where I talk quite a lot about older products, but also occasionally try some new things and just in general love chatting and trying new makeup, then I hope you will consider subscribing and joining us. And let's jump in to the 12 eyeshadow palettes that I have picked out for spring 2024. I lied, I have 13. I just counted. Oh well, so I guess we're doing 13. So what I was going to do initially is do six eyeshadow palettes that I have already tried and six brand new ones in my collection because as I said, I'm trying to go through all the eyeshadow palettes that haven't been touched yet, whether they are newer to my collection or some palettes I've had for a long time. But somehow a seventh one snuck into the eyeshadow palettes that are not brand new. So let's go through and I guess do maybe like we'll do one of each and I'm gonna go in no particular order. I think it goes without saying that you can use eyeshadow palettes in whatever capacity you want. It doesn't have to be a seasonal thing. It doesn't have to be a color story thing. Honestly, for me, it's both a seasonal thing, just like as far as colors I'm drawn to and colors I'm drawing inspiration from. Also, it's a way for me to not feel overwhelmed considering what a huge eyeshadow palette collection I have. It's nice to have a certain stack easily accessible that I am currently working through. So I say this a lot, but I feel like a lot of the videos that I want to film this year to inspire me to use more of what I already have are kind of in the realm of shop my stash. And essentially, I think for a lot of people, that's what these top seasonal videos are all about. It's not to encourage you to buy more, it's to encourage you to go through and shop your stash. With all that said, are there colors that I am drawn to in the spring. Yeah, for me, a lot of times it's green, like lighter green colors. But this year, I also want to try to get into pastels because I had one pastel palette that has been sitting in my basket of shame, meaning has not been used. I've recently purchased one that is being discontinued and might be brought back under a different name that I'm super excited to use. And then I just was going through kind of trying to see, well, what new colors can I explore for the first time this spring? that I usually don't gravitate towards. And that's how I landed on everything you're seeing here today. The first one I'm going to talk about is the What's Up Beauty Geodes palette. This is one that I really enjoy, but I haven't really used every shade. I haven't played with all the different combinations. I don't even believe I've tried the mattes in here or maybe just one or two. So there's still a lot of room for exploration here. I do know though that the few shimmers that I've tried I've loved and I love the fact that I have some pinks and purples here uh, something I've been suddenly gravitating towards again it hasn't been a thing for a couple of years but I seem to be into the pinks and the purples as you can probably tell from today's look but I also have here some greens some really fun greens a yellow I mean 
I, I just think there's a lot of fun spring options. And spring to me is a combination of those lighter greens because when we see nature open up and come alive, usually that's when you get those brightest, lightest green colors, but also all the flowers that are blooming. I mean, spring seems to have every color you can possibly imagine. You can go so many different ways. And I think this palette is gonna give me a ton of options. A palette that I haven't used in a little while and I've been really meaning to pull it back out, especially because I did a bad thing and I snagged one of the Odin's Eye mystery boxes is my Hella palette. This is the only one I have from Odin's Eye. I hear mixed things on Odin's Eye. Of course, there's tons of creators that love this brand. Sometimes I wonder if that's because they get to either work with the brand or have a code or whatnot, but you know, we're not gonna get into all that. And then there's some people that lately have been talking about how the shimmers dry out and form hard pants on a lot of their Odin side eyeshadow palettes. So I'm curious. I want to see how this performs. Not to mention the color story is perfect for spring because I have so many green options here. Those brighter greens in a lot of cases and more like yellowy, punchy greens. These are not like your darker, murkier, fall vibes greens. I'm excited to dig into those more. I have some pinks. Pinks? You know, I say I'm back into pinks and purples. Really what I should say is I'm back into mauves and purples. Pink is actually one of my least favorite colors to wear, but it, it's it's growing on me. It's growing on me. I'm trying. I'm trying to branch out. I think this palette has a lot of spring potential and a lot of unfulfilled potential when it comes to like to me trying it. I think there's still a lot of color combos here that I have never explored that I really need to. So I'm excited to get into this one. If you're not familiar, by the way, with either Odin's Eye or this collaboration, this was a palette that Angelica Nyquist, who is here on YouTube, did with them a couple of years ago. She has since done another collaboration with them. I don't have those two eyeshadow palettes. And as I said, I did get the mystery box. So I will film that and I will open it up with you guys and I am curious to see what I get in that mystery box and what eyeshadow palettes are gonna come into my life from Odin's Eye. Wish me luck and let me know, is Odin's Eye a brand that you enjoy or are you more in the camp of eh, not so sure or ooh, had a bad experience with them. I am about to test out a lot more of their products. And yes, I'm having a martini, even though this is probably not gonna be a martini Monday because I just filmed a martini Monday and I still have to drink the rest of my martini. So bonus fake martini Monday video. I just said I was gonna go one in, one out, and completely forgot. So we need to talk about two brand new eyeshadow palettes that I have yet to try because, because apparently my memory is that of a squirrel. One of the oldest eyeshadow palettes I have, as far as my new ones, my brand new ones, purchased it at Marshalls for $7.99. This is the Beach Cosmetics Los Angeles palette. Mine still has the plastic, so I'm sorry, it's gonna blind you. But this is one of the pastel palettes that I own. Now, I don't feel like all of these shades are pastel, which I'm excited about because pastels kind of intimidate me. I'm a little scared of them. And I have two other eyeshadow palettes in my brand new pile that I'm just not sure how I'm gonna get on with, but we're gonna see. I really wanna try this because I remember when this came out, it was getting really good reviews from quite a lot of people. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Laura May Beauty really loved this one back then. A bunch of other creators, I just can't think right now of exactly who, but there's so many fun colors here, so many fun shades. And I do think there's a lot of easier, simpler, more neutral looks that I actually can do here because some of these mattes could be mixed with more like monochromatic shimmers. I'm really dying to try this one, The Hills. There's also a white that can blend things out. Rodeo Drive looks gorgeous. Um, Sunset Boulevard intimidates me a little bit, I won't lie, but that's all right. We've got City of Angels if I do want a blue which is something I could have used in my look today, actually. I went for something that's like pinky purple, but with a tint of blue. I, I wanted to match the sweater, let's be real. I really am excited to finally try this palette. And this spring is when I hope to finally get to know this one. Another brand new one that I've been itching to try since I received my Beautylish lucky bag is my Danessa Myricks volume, what is this, 
five. This is an all shimmer palette, which is okay because I have tons of matte options here. Also, if you haven't seen my spring basket of doom video, which I really do think is going to be the first one I post, there is one eyeshadow palette in there that is all matte. And while it's not going to work with all of these colors, I'm hoping it's going to work with some. This is just such an array of shimmers that this can be an all year round palette. And to be honest, this was less of a spring inspiration and more of a, I just can't wait to finally use this palette. But if we want to talk spring, all the greens, this right here, this love and Herald duo situation, that is definitely something I want to use this spring. For some reason, even this radiant, even though it's more of a peachy shade, I guess, peachy gold, that is screaming spring to me. Yeah, some of these darker shades, maybe not so much, but I also need to swatch this and see what the shifts are and kind of figure out how I'm going to use these. But I'm so excited to finally bust into this palette. I have never tried Vanessa Myrick's eyeshadow formula. In fact, the only thing I've tried by Vanessa Myrick's is a blush that my friend Kelly from QBD Real gifted me for Christmas that I have been loving recently. I have my eye on a few Vanessa Myrick's products for the Sephora sale, but I can't remember if I've mentioned that earlier in this video or in my previous video that I just filmed. I'm trying to stay away from the sale as much as possible. Mostly for financial reasons, it's probably why I'm not really going to film a lot of content about it. I just don't want to tempt myself into buying a lot. What I might film after the sale is done, again, not to tempt me, <laughs> is if money were no object, what would have been my sale shopping cart? Like if, if I could just go into the store with an unlimited budget and just throw everything in my cart. So essentially a wish list video. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. Let me know your thoughts on that. Back to palettes that I have tried but I want to revisit this spring. Huda Beauty Wild Python. It's the greens for me in this one. It, these are such spring greens in my opinion and of course that lime right there. I don't know what in nature really produces like that bright bright lime but some of these other brighter greens they're really beautiful. Really beautiful and this is a palette I have wanted to explore more in a while so this will be a perfect opportunity. I also have a ColourPop palette that I have wanted to compare it to this. So I might finally do that video sometime in this spring season. One of my most recent purchases, I've actually purchased a few palettes for the very first time from this brand and I haven't decided yet which of them I'm going to put into um, my thousand subscriber giveaway, but I am leaning towards keeping this one for myself. So that's why I'm putting it in this video. This is the Sigma. This is the earthy palette. And of course, it's that center shade that got me. It is is I'm not gonna lie, it's that center shade. I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna look more carefully at all of them one more time before deciding which one to put in the giveaway. Um, but it is pretty safe to say I'm gonna keep this one for myself. It's just so beautiful and I needed more of a neutral palette in this spring lineup because let's face it, I'm not gonna be wearing bright greens and pinky purples the whole entire season. So I thought this is perfect, but I still have that pop of yellowy green. It's called moss. It looks stunning. I can't wait. Yeah, this one, this one I have a feeling I'm keeping for myself. All right, back to something I know and love, Nomad American Parks. This was my very first Nomad palette. It will forever hold a special place in my heart. I actually want to visit all of these parks one day. I have only been to Acadia in Maine. So there's this gorgeous shade Acadia Lighthouse that I definitely would love to use in the springtime. And also there is a shade called Blue Ridge Parkway, which I have driven a good length of. And that was also a highlight. I loved that trip. And have I seen anything else from here? I'm not so sure if I have, but as I said, it's all on the list. I really have been more and more into nature the older I get. And I wanna see all the gorgeous things that this country has to offer so, uh, but but let's talk about, okay, let's talk about the eyeshadow palettes and not just nature. Why this for spring? It's this for me. If I were to cover up these two rows, that nine pan, these greens, those yellows, even this earthy brick red, I don't know why, but it's speaking to me, these gorgeous shimmers. And then of course I have other options in case I want to mix things up, but this is definitely one I knew I wanted to pull out for spring this year. A palette that 
that I have purchased not too long ago because as you guys might know, I recently got a Natasha Denona affiliate code and link for 15% off. And because it was doing pretty well for a little while there, which I was really surprised at myself. So thank you so much to all of you that clicked and used that link. But because of that, I got an offer for what I'm sure is probably the least popular palette in the Natasha Denona midi lineup. And I already actually have the, what in my opinion was the better version of this palette that Mel Thompson, who's no longer with us, did with Sydney Grace. But it was a good discount and I couldn't pass it up and I did go ahead and purchase the Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. I wanna do a separate video on this because since I got that discount, I did end up picking up one of these for you guys as well. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a separate video with a separate giveaway or put that in my thousand subscriber giveaway. But either way, just know that this palette is coming to somebody and I have of course yet to try it because this is a fairly recent acquisition, but I thought this would be a great muted spring palette. So these are not really pastels by any means. These are all year colors that are just less punchy, less vibrant, which I think is why it kind of flopped among some circles. I don't know how deep color friendly a lot of these shades are, but I'm pale. I'm sure I can use every single one of these shades and then some. And to be honest, now that I'm opening it for the first time, mind you, in person, it's a lot prettier than I expected it to be. It really is. I'm now super excited to use this and to compare it to my Sydney Gray singles. I would love to know if there's any content you would like to see with this palette and what that content would be. Because as I said, I got this only because I did get that discount and I got it specifically with my YouTube channel in mind. So I would like to do something with this palette to justify the purchase. And I would like to do a giveaway because I do have a second one. ABH Norvina. This is one I got as a gift from a subscriber a couple of years ago. I really have enjoyed this palette thus far. It's what is on my eyes today, but it's getting old. And so many people are no longer really using or loving these older ABH palettes. Some people are complaining that the quality is not the same. So I really wanted to pull it in for the spring because first of all, I do think the color story is fitting, especially for what I'm liking right now. And I, I wanna give it a proper test. I wanna give it a good run for its money. This is one I could have put into my basket of doom, but I put a different ABH palette in there. So I figured this could be a great pick for my spring palettes. Let me know if you guys still have this and whether you still enjoy it. Okay. Another really old one that I picked up at a TG Maxx or Marshalls and it's just been laying around is the original Glam Light and Michaela palette. This, I mean, this has every color you could possibly imagine for starters, but I also do think a lot of them are more spring and summer appropriate. And that's why I selected this palette. I don't foresee myself using this whole palette this spring because this is already a lot being somebody that doesn't wear makeup every day. I foresee this palette maybe like rolling in from spring to summer. This is something I could use pretty much for like the next half a year easily. And I really hope to test this one out and see if this is something that's, you know, I wanna keep long-term or not. So again, a lot of these, you know, I could put into Basket of Dooms, but being that this is brand new, it's not like I'm revisiting and I'm no longer sure if I want it. I need to visit her for the first time. Like we're not even distant acquaintances yet, Farrell's friends. So we're gonna see where that palette takes me. This is one I've been itching to try again. This is the Natasha Denona Trio Chrome palette. It's one that I really love. The mattes here are fabulous. I thought that there's no better time than spring to pull this in because I do have some bright options. I have some neutral options, but they're more peachy neutral options. They're a little bit lighter in tone. They're not like your typical brown browns that I reach for more in the fall or even bronzy browns that are more summer appropriate for me. I thought this is a great pick for the spring and I'm excited to use it. Last one from the brand new new, and I believe this is 
the newest palette to my collection in general. Either that or the Sigma. I can't remember which I ordered first. It's the Blend Bunnies Sugar and Grunge. If you guys follow Blend Bunnies on Instagram, you probably know that there's this absurd story of somebody suing Blend Bunnies for using the word grunge. I thought it was a word that's just in general part of the English vernacular, but call me crazy. Regardless, basically the owner of Blend Bunnies decided to take the high road, not deal with lawyer fees and the time that of course a legal battle would take and just clearance out this version of the palette, rework it, Possibly, I think she did a follow-up post where she said she might rework it and it might come back as a totally different palette with a new name. But she was clearancing these out at 50% off and this bargain hunter was not going to say no, especially because I only have one of the Blend Bunny Cosmetics palette and I have yet to try the formula. I haven't reached into the other one either. So it's time. I've heard about this brand since I think 2020 and I've wanted to try this brand since 2020. This I thought would be perfect for me to pull in right now for the spring because there are definitely some pastels but there's also some moody colors to break things up. There's a row of these shimmers that looks really really beautiful. I know Blend Bunny Cosmetics is mostly known for their mattes but I'm excited to also play with the shimmers. If you have this palette let me know how do you enjoy it. All right, and last but not least I decided to pull in my my Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde. I can't remember if I've already pulled this into a previous spring top favorite top eyeshadows, but it's like always going to be a top eyeshadow palette for spring. I, I mean, especially as I said, because I'm back to this vibe. I'm back to these lighter pinks, mauves and purples but then there's a few pops of colors and some neutrals a little bit of everything in here and i just haven't loved on this in a little while so it's time it is time and with that those are my 13 lucky number 13 i actually do love the number 13. those are my 13 picks for spring eyeshadow palettes for this year would love to hear what you think do you have any of these palettes which ones do you enjoy the most or maybe which ones have you declared and you no longer have. I love chatting with you guys in the comments, especially if it's about eyeshadow palettes. Start some conversations with me down below. I would absolutely love that. And other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was fun. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I hope that you're continuing to stay safe and healthy. Take care of yourselves and those around you. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye guys.